Halava means trouble, noise, because there was a lot, whole lot of trouble and noise here. This room served as their slave market. So let me explain to you briefly what we call the transatlantic slavery, because I know very well that there is a distorted version that makes it sound like Africans had nothing to do, and even Africans were enslaving themselves before they came, and now, but these are all misconceptions and lies. Now, before the Europeans came, there were empires in Africa who were well organized, who were civilized people, but later they twisted the whole thing, that we were swinging from one tree to the other. So, in order for you to look bad, for you to look like Though you are not stupid, they want you to look stupid so that, you know, in the eyes of people, when they are more treating you, oh, this person is like an, an animal. He or she deserves it. So they took a lot of misconceptions out. And no wonder, no wonder most of our artifacts that we developed over the centuries are now in the museums in Europe. But yet they say the African wasn't civilized. They were even surprised how we could make things out of metal. So Nigeria, when you go to Nigeria, they, will, they could make stuff out from bronze and all that. So we're well civilized people. So the transatlantic slave trade, it didn't actually start our history. It destroyed our history. Let me put it in that context. So talking about the transatlantic slave trade, no African invented the transatlantic slave trade. The Europeans invented the transatlantic slave trade. First, they invented it because now, they had eradicated the native people of North America, South America. You know, we know what they did to the Indians when they got killed with diseases. And they used the native people on the farms. And now they are eradicated, you need another substitute. Unfortunately, our kind were seen as the best. Because our kind were seen as strong, robust, we could resist the weather. You know, we could resist everything. So unfortunately, we became victims of the transatlantic slave trade. Now, what actually happened was, Europeans conducted raids, kidnappings, and took people out. I'll, I'll make an example of like John Hawkins. Was it John Hawkins or something? He was a British. He brought a ship from, from England, you know, came to West Africa, you know, raided towns and villages, failed his ship up, with people he had enslaved, and moved them to the Caribbean, to the West Indies. Made so much money that now the British Crown got so interested in the slave trade. So this is to say, the Europeans also went into the hinterlands to raid, kidnap, and to steal people. The Portuguese did say in Congo and Angola. Now, they needed a constant supply of people. So the Europeans devised the divide and conquer strategy. You know, when we talk about Africa, when we talk about West Africa, when we talk about Ghana, we have so many ethnic groups with different languages. So now they took advantage of that. If I don't speak your language, then I don't know you, right? So you could enslave me, you could do as you wish with me, because now somebody is making us do that. So the divide and conquer thing the Europeans invented promoted tribal and ethnic warfare among Africans. Because at the end of the day, the more we fought among ourselves, the more the Europeans benefited. Because the prisoners of war, the war captives, people you raided and kidnapped, was finally sold to them. May I ask a 